Hello everyone, welcome! Today we're going to talk about the Evocation Wizard and everything that set is apart from all the other wizards. Let's do it! Now, the first ability you get is Sculpt Spells, that's pretty good. That makes to explain it plainly. Whenever you cast an AoE spell, your party members will be immune to it. So that's very strong. You can be in the middle of everyone and just blow stuff away. Okay, to demonstrate the scope spells, I have my people here on a fight. They're on a bit of a scuffle. I'm going to catch Fireball because Fireball is the most amazing spell in the game. And I will hit three, four, three of them. But usually, if I'm not an Evocation Wizard, I will hit my guys also. But since I'm, I'm an Evocation Wizard, that doesn't matter. I'm a snare, but I should still be able to cast anything as a snare, right? What the hell? Okay, let me just miss a step first because. Apparently being a snare makes so you can't aim through the elemental, but now I can easily cast my thing. And since I'm a vocation wizard, I hit everyone, but I didn't damage my own guys. Very cool. Very powerful. Another power of the evocation wizard is potent cantrip. That pretty much means that if you make if you cast a cantrip that implies a saving throw. Even if the creature succeeds, it takes half damage, usually for a camp, actually not usually, every time for cantrips, if you succeed at the saving throw, you take zero damage, but not for evocation wizards, you should do some damage. I don't like a lot of this, because I feel like if you have, if you already do more damage with your fireboat or your other campers with that you shoot, right? So I think it's probably wiser to just use that. But sometimes maybe you can't hit. Maybe you're like in a pickle in melee and you can't hit, or I don't know. Then maybe you want to use Whatever a camp that implies for a saving throw. To give you an example, I'm going to cast Fireball now. I hope I don't get counter spelled. Uh, I have my monk and my druid in range. Actually, just my druid because I'm pretty much hitting these three, right? I can see it here, is that it? I will miss the step, so then I can. Do whatever I need. Alright. Now I'm going to cast that to you. Uh counter spellers. Okay. Yeah. Now another nice ability that we get is the empowered evocation. That makes so we add your English modifier on all evocation attacks. So that's pretty good because the firebolt, for example, is an evocation attack. So if you were to attack and hit him, we're going to cause plus five damage. And that's all right. But you know what's the biggest interaction? Well, think about level six spells. Disintegrate would be the big dog, right? You do you deal up to 100 damage, and that's a false damage. The creature has a dexterity saving throw, though, so if it passes, it takes like zero damage, right? But we can also throw a magic missile on level six because magic missile will add. Our intellect, intellect modifier on every missile. So level six, that's eight missiles. We are going to add on top of 84 plus eight. We're going to add eight times our int modifier. So eight times five, 40. So that will be 84 plus 40. Have a look at this guy, 45 health. Let's match missile him for six level. That's it, that's done. Now, we could, can even go and see the damage we have done. That is, uh, that's 15 here, 25, 25.7, that's 32, plus 9, 41, 51 here, plus 16. So, seven, six, seven, 67 damage. I went back in time, so instead of match missile, I can cast the disintegrate, and let's see how it fares. 40% chance of succeeding only. It did succeed and caused 77 damage, that is roughly what we call if you are a magic missile. Without the chance of fumbling, so yes, that's one other argument in favor of magic missile. But you do leave like nice pile of ash with disintegrate, so there is this bonus, yeah. What do you think about it? Do you like the vocation wizard? What, what wizard are you playing with? Leave a comment, yeah? And thank you very much for watching the video. Ciao!